All right, so um, good afternoon. I am standing between you and food. That's always a challenging uh, time to be. So um, my name is, um, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. If this works, yeah. Uh, my name is Esther Spanger. I am a director of business development for Micron uh, for Europe. Um, I've been in the memory and semiconductor industry my entire life, uh, or well, at least my professional life. Uh, so 25 plus years. I worked for uh, startups. I worked for large companies. I worked in technical roles, marketing, sales. Uh, but the funnest one of all is the one I'm doing right now, and that is working for Micron, uh, doing business development uh, across Europe. So I get to meet. Yesterday I was in Barcelona. The day before I was in Lisbon. Uh, tomorrow I'm flying to the U.S. And so I get to meet people from all over the world to talk about technology and um, you know trends in the data center. And uh, you know I personally really really love it. So the um, the discussion that we uh, that I had prepared for you today was to talk about you know kind of two of the new uh, features and trends that we have um, at Micron. Um, if you you may know Micron as a large DRAM company, uh, you may know them less uh, on the SSD portion that we have um, right now. Roughly 70% of Micron's revenue comes from DRAM, and about 30% comes from um, SSDs. We've definitely been playing catch up on the uh, SSD side, but um, right now I would say the portfolio that we have both on the DRAM and the SSD side is probably the widest in the industry. There is really only two, one other vendor in the market that has both DRAM and SSD and pretty much the entire range, and that is Samsung, and then there is uh, Micron. Now, I know you've seen a lot of storage vendors talk about uh, their SSDs today, they talk about their hard disk drive, so I actually wanted to spend most of my time, uh, which is very limited, on um, some of the trends that are happening on the DRAM side, and that is, of course, the transition that we are currently going through um, by going from DDR4 to DDR5. The main reason that we are moving from DDR4 to DDR5, of course, is the speed. DDR4 is maximized at a 3200 megahertz speed, whereas DDR5 can go all the way up to 8800 megahertz speed. And on top of that, DDR5 actually um, utilizes the bus in a much more efficient way than DDR4. Uh, and the reason for that is the architecture of DDR5. If you look at DDR4, you basically have one bus, and when you're getting data in and out, that is across that one bus. Now, with DDR, as you may know, you have to refresh the data so it actually stays inside the memory itself. And so when there is a refresh cycle happening, you cannot transfer data in and out of that bus, which creates fairly low efficiencies. In fact, when you see here, 66% data bus efficiency, it meaning that the other 33% is when the bus is busy with those refresh cycles. On DDR5, the architecture of the way we built the modules is different than with DDR4. We now actually have two buses. And so now we can transfer data in and out from one bus while we're doing the refresh cycle on the other bus. And so that gets us a much higher data efficiency because at least half the time, right, half the bus, I can still transfer data in and out while I'm refreshing the data on the second part of the bus. So we can actually get up to much higher efficiencies in the case of DDR5, we're looking at about 89% efficiency. So not only do we go to higher speeds, right? We move from 3200, today we are at 4800 megahertz. We're gonna come out soon as an industry with 5600. We're gonna go to 6200, et cetera, et cetera. So we can go to higher bandwidth, but we also have a more efficient way of getting that data in and out because of the different architecture that we, um, we have incorporated in DDR5. Now, when we, the re one of the reasons why we want to go to higher bandwidth is because we have more and more cores inside our CPU. And the more cores we have inside our CPU, the more bandwidth we need to feed those cores. So applications 
They want more cores because the applications that we see in the data center are becoming more and more demanding. The applications, um, because we have more cores, we need more bandwidth for each of those cores, which means we need to provide uh, these CPUs with more and more bandwidth, and hence we are moving to DDR5. Now, what applications do not necessarily need is all of that capacity. As I'm feeding more and more cores with my bandwidth, each of that bandwidth has a module with a certain capacity on it. And so what we end up um, seeing when we are looking at uh, the modules that we have today, right? We are all used to uh, buying 16, 32, 64, or even 128 gigabyte DRAM modules. But they are very big jumps within those capacity points. So if I have to start sh putting a lot of modules in my uh, server just to feed my course with bandwidth, I now am also starting to have to look at, you know, do I really need all that capacity or am I paying too much for all that capacity? So we end up with something potentially that we call stranded capacity, capacity that we don't really want, we're paying for, but we only are taking that capacity because we need to feed the course with bandwidth. So we are coming out now in the industry, and Micron is one of the first to do that, with what we call non-binary capacity points. So 24, 48, and 96 gigabyte. And so that's kind of like this you know, funky in-between capacity point that we have never really seen in the industry. But it is something Micron actually is going to announce this next week. Uh, we have samples uh, available, in fact, um, our friends at Boston have already started uh, qualifying and testing these samples and we're, we'll be in mass production um, in another month. Um, and so these non-binary capacities, what that allows us to do is to now find the right balance between performance and the bandwidth, the cost and the capacity that we really, really need. So we don't have to go and jump in these 32 or 64 gigabyte steps for each of these cores that I have. I can now um, put much smaller steps and really find the right uh, balance between you know the things that I need in my in my server. Is it really optimal? Is it really you know focused on the highest performance, the highest capacity, or do I just need the performance and I can take some lower capacity? So that is a kind of a very very big new thing within um, the um, the industry. Um, so when you look at the DDR5 modules that you will see available in the market, you can now go from 16 to 24 to 32 to 48 uh, to 96, sorry, and 64, of course, gigabytes. So there are much, much smaller jumps in between each of these capacity points, and that allows for a lot bigger optimization. Now, another interesting thing that we'll see is that we can now get up to 96 gigabytes uh, capacity without having to go and do complicated uh, ways to build this. So if you look at the 128 gigabyte dims in the market today, whether it's DDR4 or DDR5, the way that the, um, the manufacturers, and this is not only us, this is every manufacturer in the market, if you want to get to 128 gigabyte on this you know, module, you have to go to something that we call 3D stacking. You cannot simply, by putting the chips on your module, you just don't have enough capacity inside each chip to get to that maximum capacity. So you have to start stacking chips on one of, one of each other. And that is an expensive way of manufacturing. And so it takes... Um, it's, it's much higher cost. In fact, if you look today, 128 gigabytes uh, DDR5 RDIM will probably go for about $1,000, right? That's, that's crazy high. Um, whereas if you look at the 64 gigabyte, right, which would be half the capacity, they're not selling for $500. They're selling probably for somewhere $180, $190. So it is definitely the, the, the jump to double the capacity uh, means that the, the price is four to five times the, uh, the previous capacity. And so that is, you know, um, a very prohibiting thing to start using these higher capacities in um, your applications. We come out now with a 96 gigabyte 
that we can actually use because we increased the capacity inside the chip itself. So we don't have to go to expensive stacking and expensive uh, you know, ways to manufacture. We used to use the same manufacturing that, we've done, that we use for our 16, for our 32 gig, for our 64 gig. It's nothing different. And so we can basically get on a linear trajectory when it comes to our cost. So for easy uh, purpose, let's say the 64 gigabyte that I have would cost me $200, right? The 96 gigabyte would cost me $300. Okay, so it's just one and a half times the price instead of, you know, a thousand dollars. So it is a much more cost efficient way to actually build a server. So in this case, I show you an example, a server that has one terabyte inside the server. When we use the old 64 gigabyte, uh, you know, parts and we would get to uh, around twenty eight hundred dollars per server. That's kind of our base uh, comparison cost. Um, if we were to use 128 gigabyte RDIMs that are in the market today, I would get to two terabytes in my server, but I would have you know 400 plus higher, 400% uh, higher cost. Um, if I use the 96 gigabyte, I have one and a half times the capacity, but I also have only a 50% cost increase. So it is a much more cost efficient way to get to higher capacities without having to go to these you know, expensive um, 128 gig RDIMs that are stacked. Now, I have also tons of uh, discussion about the NVMe. My time is out. Um, we have a booth. I would love to talk to all of you. Um, there is other storage vendors that you know uh, kind of made you up to speed on what's happening in the uh, SSD market. So I thought I'd give you a little bit more details on what is going on in the DRAM market. And with that, I would like to wish you a great rest of your day. Uh, have a great uh, food uh, lunch, and we hope to see you at our booth. Thanks. <laughs>